So we're going to do a wee base video. Let me talk about some of the gear I'm using. I'm using, uh, I'm, I can show off here. I'm using a James Johnston uh, Squire signature model. It's got a little toty signature on the back there. Um, Lake Placid Blue. Um, the, these actually retailed fairly cheap for a bass guitar. I know basses are used a little bit more than more expensive than a six string guitar. Um, I think this one was round about four or five hundred pounds, which of course is a lot of money, but for a quality instrument, I think it's really worthwhile. Um, this is what I use mostly at home when I'm practicing. I find it really, really fun to play. It's it, it's it's quite fast around the neck. It's got a nice slim neck. Um, lovely thing to lovely thing to hold on to. Um, and then from the bass, we are going into a Sansamp bass driver DI. Let me hold it up so you can get a better look. Now this essentially is a sort of posh DI box, a direct inject box. So you can take an XLR out to front of house or to your monitor, um, man hello Dan, um, and it gives you a really nice line level signal um, for all you geeky folk out there. This is one of the best bits of kit you can buy for a couple of hundred quid. Um, it, it can live in your rig, it can get you out of jail. It's great for recording, just a really versatile thing to have. Let me show you what the sound is like before I put this on. Not too sure how well you can hear that, but trust me, it makes a big difference. Um, it's something I've always got in, in whatever rig we're doing, whether it's a little acoustic session or a uh, kind of big boys rock show. It's such a good bit of kit. Now the other thing that I've got here making the noise is my very first bass amp. How about that? How poetic's that? That my old dad bought me um, probably in 93, 94. It didn't have the, the zebra skin full. <laughs> it didn't have the full zebra skin um, when he got it. That was, um, that was model's own. That was me trying to make things a bit more interesting. Um, but it served me well. This is what got us round all the pubs and clubs in Ayrshire and Glasgow, and um, and it's just really nice to have it back in my life. Um, we lent it to the Museum of Scotland so they could put it into the Rip It Up exhibition. So I'm I'm kind of really quite proud that I've got a wee bit of kit that that made it into a museum. How about that, Daddy? Um, so I'm going to play a song for you today on the bass. You can hear what this stuff all sounds like. We're going to do Sounds Like Bloons today, um, just because it's a really bouncy song, it kind of, it helps me with my mood, which has been a little bit flat today, I'll be honest. So let's do Sounds Like Bloons, um, what do I have to look out for when I'm playing here? So th this song, if I, quite typically of, of Biffy, is a, a spiky, complicated guitar line with a spiky, complicated drum riff, and I'm trying to sit in the middle and tie it together a little bit in some way, I'm trying to keep it simple as I usually do. Um, and most importantly, because it's an exciting song, it's got that energy. If I don't watch myself, then I'll get ahead of the beat. I'll start to play ahead of Ben. And it's really important to me to try and uh, keep relaxed, trying to stay in the pocket, as they say, and, and just try to, yeah, try to get that tightness. I think that's really important for it to be, t for it to be really punchy for such a kind of rhythmical part. I think it's really important to be tight. So um let's let's just have fun. I'm gonna enjoy this. Mm-hmm. 
fun. That was good fun. So that was Sounds Like Balloons. I hope you enjoyed it. It was nice playing along with you. And uh, we'll check in with you sometime really soon. Uh, soon to see how you're doing. Okay, cheers. Ciao.